Yeah, it's a quite a little bit funny story. Uh, I was working as a rail welder in Norway for 10 years. I had a girlfriend uh, who was living and working in another place. I was working in Norway. I had my workshop 100 kilometers the other way, so I just went around a lot. And one day I started to actually renew the welds that I had done 10 years ago when I started on the railway. So I just felt that, ah, it's time to do something else and get closer to the girlfriend. So I just quit my job on the day. I have been skiing all my life and living in the mountains. So I just found a ski patrol job here in Lofstalen. So I just thought, what the hell? I'm just going to try it out. Uh, my girlfriend was still 200 kilometers away, but it was a way closer than Norway. So I just gave it a try. But the funny thing of the story is that it's only lasted one more month after I moved home. <laughs> but I'm still here, almost four years later. I have been working with carbon fiber just for a hobby for, I don't know, since I was like a teenager. After I started biking, like I have so my thoughts, what you can do different with carbon into the bike. Most of the industry is just copying each other and copying like everything and then they do the same. I like a bit of different concept. The bigger brands right now, they're just selling you numbers and colors and they're just telling you to what to believe. Instead of actually buying a bike from all these numbers and what they tell you to think about the bike, I wish the people to come here to me in Lofstalen to come to my small workshop and we try out different sizes, different geometry. Uh, I can look at how you ride and I can just give you different bikes, different setups and you can give me feedback on what you like and what you dislike and then after a day or two I can make it as you want. Instead of buying something you think is good, you're actually buying a bike that is good for you with some of my own concepts of course. Before I bought the machine I had to outsource everything that's both expensive because we do a lot of prototyping and then you make just one of a kind every time. And instead of outsourcing it, which gets really expensive and also takes a lot of time, so I can just develop a part on the computer and then I had to send it away. It took like two, three, four weeks uh, during this pandemic time. Sometimes it takes up to half a year to get a small part. Uh, right now I can just use my computer programming thing and get the part within a few hours. So it's for me, a small manufacturer, it makes like everything. <laughs> It's really easy to just program, get the part, look at it, measure it, try it out. If it doesn't work, well, just make a new part. It takes a few hours more. Just these small tweaks. It saves me like days, weeks to have a machine. My experience with uh, like CNC machines, before I bought this one, I built some of them myself, two or three machines, and like hobby level machines. And I've used the Mach 3, like everyone else, I guess, who starts up. And when I bought the 5.0 robotics machine, comparing the 5.0, robotic machines to like the other hobby level machines that I built myself. Of course, it's the sturdiness that's the most important thing because I'm milling aluminium mostly now or because I'm doing carbon or aluminium molds for carbon. So I really need a sturdy machine with good accuracy to make some really nice surface finish in 3D. The hobby machines, they are just flopping around and you're trying to get them slower and slower and slower. And with this one, you can just increase the speed and still it's just eating aluminium. It's cutting the time for a hobby level machine for the tenth of the time. I guess that's one of the biggest differences between them. Uh, also, it's still the, it's using the UCNC, uh, which is made for people who don't have any experience. It's a really nice and easy use interface and just push play. The smart boxes, of course, that's like one of the biggest ups with the machine because like when you're a hobby machinist, you can't really use maybe all of the tooling data on everything and so you have to like guess everything and when coming from a hobby world that's really hard to know how hard you can push so the smart box makes a really big difference for unexperienced machinists like me myself look at the smart box look at the vibrations and everything and then so i can just push and find the the ultimate cutting data the goal is to develop a complete bike and to get people get here to try it out and i can make really customizable bikes for people but to get there, I need to get money. Everyone needs to get money uh, to, to continue developing. So I need to start it with smaller parts. And that's where I started with a handlebar. And the handlebar is like quite unique with a different flex. It's not even round. It's uh, square in the middle to get a different flex pattern. I got orders, I got some money and now I'm continuing. So the bike should be ready in just a few months. Before the end of this year, I should have a, a running bike and uh, of course, from there develop it even more over the winter time and then start to trying it out and 
starting to sell them. I have a lot of interest in them, so I also have like a few pre-orders on bikes, even though I haven't seen the bike yet. I don't have any big plans in actually like doing this super expanding thing. I want to make them myself. That's what I like to do, and just keep doing it here in Loftalen. The interest is it's uh, it's pretty big. As soon as you start to make something unique in carbon, name current components. It's actually a word game with uh, a Swedish my my last name. It's uh, Ström. My name is Karl Ström, and Ström is uh, electric current. But when you say current in like the Swinglish, you use the Swedish letter Ö uh, instead of the uh, U. So I just replaced the U with a Swedish Ö uh, and made it current. That's the story behind the name. My idea with the company is, is not to change the whole industry. The idea with the bike is to actually get a contact with the owner as well. I want to know every people or every person actually. I don't want to mass produce it. I want to know the name. I want to know the serial number on the bike and which serial number belongs to which owner. That's like the big part of uh, making these bikes.